Hey everybody, CBH here, and in today's video, we're going to be playing some mid-range monk on the ladder in the post-Return to Clockwork City metagame. So, for the build itself, this is another one that I have just sort of started to update after Return to Clockwork City's release, which was very recent. So, as with most decks you'll be seeing at this time, it's sort of a work in progress, not too different from traditional mid-range monk lists, however. I mentioned in a past video it was one of my more successful decks last season on the ladder. Uh, I don't really have the specifics of exactly what I changed from that build to this build, but some notable cards we're including from Return to Clockwork City are the Phalanx Exemplars and the three copies of Clockwork Apostle. I was also playing a Swims at Night uh, for just a generally decent six cost, but I wound up taking it out yet again just for the Brittany Olive, which is safer, a little bit less of a win more card, not only good when we're already ahead. Swims at Night just didn't perform, unfortunately. So, a couple of things that I was playing include the Goblin Skull Curse Package, which is very good against aggro. Uh, I talk a little bit more about this build in a past video, I'm pretty sure, but not even playing Dawn Star Healers because the aggro matchup with 17 Prophecies and the Goblin Skull Curse Package uh, was pretty good. Actually, I think it was only 15 Prophecies. I wasn't playing Black Saps. But for today's video, I needed some more space, so uh, no Leaf Lurgers in this build. I am playing the obviously the Clockwork Apostles at the 7-cost slot just to add some additional damage. Not just playing this card for the premium art, as it turns out, even though it's very nice. Phalanx Exemplar, really overperformed, just a really powerful card to play, not only for pressuring, but also to help you defend against aggro decks. Uh, and instead of the Goblin Skulks, I was playing Thieves Guild Recruit. Now, you don't need to play Thieves Guild Recruit, I think. It was pretty nice because I was playing not only Tazcad, but the Apostles for possible reductions, and if you reduce any of those cards, it's likely to just win you the game straight up. But Broom of Profiteer is another potential decent option for a two cost. Uh, basically, the strongest one we could be playing is Goblin Skulk, but if I'm not going to be playing the Go Goblin Skulk Curse Package, that's just a whole six cards that we uh, don't really have the space to include currently, but you could potentially work things around and re-include those, maybe even Leaf Lurkers if you want, but then you have a lot of five drops, Murkwater Shot, Commons an option, tons of options for this deck, but this did perform well today for me on a 23 and 6 win rate. Had to check my sheet down there really quick. So pretty good, got me out of the dumpster in Legend from the 40s back to top 15 or so. Hopefully we can take some more wins in today's video and talk about some lines of play. And as always, if you enjoy the video, feel free to leave a like and stay subscribed for more Legends videos. Follow my stream in the description, and I'll see you next time. Apparently we actually made it to top 10. I definitely didn't end 10. I think I ended at like 12 or so on stream. Apparently uh, a couple people dropped ahead of me. It's good to see. All right, let's keep the two drop and ship the rest. We have the ring. Things are looking good up against Battle Mage. Probably a more aggressive version. And my webcam's kind of small down there. Luck to your house. There we go. I feel a bit more real. All right. May you walk on warm sands. Well, I say we start out with something substantial. Bless us, Kai. That can trade a little bit. It would've been really nice to play Thieves Guild Recruit and reduce Tazcad. Guess it's not meant to be this game. Just casually draw the most expensive card on the first turn of the game. Maybe not an aggressive Battle Mage deck if he's not playing anything yet. Dragon Battle Mage, huh? Interesting. Well, I don't want to play East March so much this turn. I think I'm just going to go ahead and play Hive Defender in the right. And not break that rune. Maybe we top deck a Hoffing a Marauder and that would make it amazing. Maybe we could uh, just play the East March's next turn regardless and not hit a Mystic Dragon or something off of a Prophecy. That would be horrible for us. But here it looks like we will be going in for some damage. And immediately hitting a prophecy. Did we really hit Mystic Dragon? <laughs> oh, Mystic Dragon. My scales move Why do you have to down. exist? Well, he's gonna be attacking that for sure. So I'd like to have Thieves Guild, I guess, over there to finish it off. And then I'll play East March in the left. I guess I could use Cleric instead of East March here to protect my Hive Defender. My that seems fine enough. May we serve 
Saves the ring charge. Maybe you can get a turn 8 task at going. God, that is the worst, man. Oh, because the card before the one on the far right was a Mystic Dragon. I don't know what he drew for his last turn, but that's what we would have broken if we had gone in the previous turn. <laughs> of course, like Mystic Dragon, not a Mystic Dragon, Mystic Dragon. Just a free 4 4 this early. I don't have to explain how absurdly good that is right now. I'm sure you guys know. It's going in for some damage. I guess I have a pretty decent Cloud Rest Illusionist. Yeah, it's about as good as we could expect. A little distraction might prove useful. I think he's gonna be doing that attack with the Midnight Snack into the one two for me, so I'll just make him do that. And that'll prevent me from going Cloud Rest into the two two favorably, and then the one two could finish off the Mystic Dragon. Is he always oh, not doing that? Wow, he's not doing it. Wow. Okay, so a slower dragon battle mage deck that also wanted to break two runes very quickly, but then also wanted to ice storm. Honestly, we, we are ahead in cards, you know, and I would still be ahead in cards if he had not given me two free cards. So it's worth noting that at least. Um... Hmm. I could attempt to start healing, but I don't have anything to do with Brynjolf is the problem. So I think I might just go East March Matron. But I'll think I'll East March first. If I pick up Hive Defender, maybe I'll do that instead. What could I pick up off the Matron that I would rather play than East March? Can't really think of anything. We'll hold, no matter what. Ultra's not bad. Something to weave into a turn. It's not enough to watch your back these days. That's pretty good. I mean, it does die immediately, but it is pretty solid. Unless he's not battling. I guess that's totally fair, too. It's a fair line. <laughs> he's going to be trying to smack me for 10. We could let him and develop the Brynjolf. Where we could play Phalanx, and hopefully those will trade, but that's really weak to a Wardcraft or Belligerent. Well, everything's kind of weak to Belligerent Giant at that point. But uh, we have 8, and then another 8, so that's potentially just 16. If we can connect to face with both of these for two turns in a row, Tazkad straight up kills him. And uh, playing the Brynjolf and maybe the Mournhold Trader could just sort of speed that up. I would like to save the Ring Charge in case I want to go for Tazkad, but let's not hit more Prophecies first. Okay, or we could just hit more Prophecies. That's another way we could play this. Okay. Okay, so other plays. <laughs> I mean, I'm not at risk of dying right now. I do have at least 10 life left after he attacks. Let's just assume this dies. What if I play Feasting Vulture, Mournhold, Trader, East March, Crusader? It's 5, 9, 13. And Tazcat is still lethal. Wait, no, I can't do that because then I won't be able to have the ring left. Shall we put in a dishonest day's rank? Well, if the Brynjolf lives, I can still play Tazkad. Don't punish me, game. Nah, this turn's a puzzler. It'd be a lot easier to win this game if we hadn't hit two prophecies. They won't get drop on I feel like I'm not the first person who ever said that. <laughs> You're not the only master of prophecies. Just give me a name. No, he's really not. Uh, I mean, Unstoppable Rage is a card. It's not one that I particularly think he's playing, but... If he is, it's gonna pretty much blow everything up, except for his 7-3. If he has, like, a improvised weapon, I might just lose the game. I mean, we're pretty much set up lethal here, unless we have something like a Rage. Wow, this game is a Prophecy Fiesta. And I should have lethal here with the Clockwork Apostle. I can only bypass one rune. So, I mean, we just have to not hit a Prophecy. What in the world? Just be a Circle Initiate. Or a Greystone Ravager. Why? Why, why is this happening to me? So I can trade with the 7-3. That option is still available. 
do I want to go? <laughs> so sad. Phalanx is weak to removal plus damage. I mean, it weaves in the easiest of the turn. I could play Phalanx with East March, or I could play Phalanx Cut Purse Trader, because I will have the completed contract. I mean, he's running low on lightning bolts. It's nothing personal. Teach you a mess with me. We'll never give ground. Of course I'm on your side. And I can definitely play Tazcat if I want next turn. I can definitely play Apostle if I want next turn. The question here is, are we able to make it until next turn? At least Prophecy Fiesta is a good YouTube title. We must protect our stronghold. Oh, I won't get the drop on me. We'll see you. If I win this, it proves without any doubt there is a strong difference, significant difference in the power level of these two decks. And I don't think I can win it anymore this turn. We'll hold no matter what. I figured out how to beat prophecies. I'm just not going to break a rune this turn. I know if I attack, it's going to be third Mystic Dragon into third Lightning Bolt, and I'm going to lose. The only downside here is if he plays like exactly Ice Storm, it might take me another turn to find the damage to kill him. Okay. <laughs> Why? What did I do to deserve this? Is someone out there? Oh, I know. I got a lot of prophecies on all my opponents today. I figured it out. Okay, do we just win? Please tell me we just win. Okay, it's over. Thank God. I never want to play this particular game of Legends ever again. What an experience. Okay, that wasn't meant to be that short of a video, but that was a Prophecy Fiesta. And that's just a good standalone game, so hopefully you guys enjoyed a brief look into Midrange Monk and the situations it can overcome, and I'll see you guys next time. Didn't even gain a rank for that.